Uh, Sunny Slope is uh, personal to me because uh, right over here used to be what they called John C. Lincoln uh, Hospital. And uh, 20, 1996, uh, my daughter was in there brain dead. And uh, I told you that story before. So lots of miracles happen. And uh, I'm standing right here now because of that. And uh, Sunny Slope's an interesting place. It used to be the meth capital of the United States back in the 80s. And uh, it's still loaded with drugs and crime and all that other stuff. But uh, this church here started by Franklin Hall back in 1977, they built it. And James, the guy that's been helping us, he was one of the guys that built the church. And he never left. The ministry's kind of closed down. They have a, a bunch of people that still follow uh, Hall, and they have an annual convention here starting next week. They all get together back here for, I guess, hold a service or whatever. I don't know what they're doing, but they still use the place for funerals and stuff like that. Uh, they said, uh, you know, if I wanted to have a Sunday service here, no problem. Uh, I'd probably do it, but we'd have a problem with uh, people coming. That would be the biggest challenge. But if it hadn't have been for Sunny Slope, I wouldn't even be a Christian. You know, my uh, daughter uh, got in a car accident on Deer Valley Road, 54th Avenue. The car flipped like a Dirty Harry type show. She f was thrown out of the car, landed on her head in the middle of uh, Deer Valley Road gone. And at that moment, uh, there happened to be an, a helicopter taking another patient over here to John C. Lincoln. And so they got the call that a nurse that was following the car pulled over and jumped out of the car to run <laughs> to run to see Tracy. And then this helicopter stopped and went like that. And uh, they got her in the uh, uh, helicopter, or what do you call it? What's that, what are they called? Airvac, Airvac, Medevac. They got her in the Medevac <clears throat> and got her hooked up and boop, she died. But they got her hooked up so she was breathing. So by the time they got her over here, uh, she was, they were keeping her alive. And then, uh, it's a long story after that, but uh, the night it happened, I was having a, another normal week, you know, 70, 80 hours, working all the time. Uh, I had uh, everything, money, you know, lots of superficial friends, lots of chicks, and I get a call, I'm sitting in, the, in my living room, that night I get a call and uh, I'm half drunk and uh, I pick the phone up, my ex-wife's on the phone, Tracy's mother, and uh, she never cries. My ex-wife is uh, the strongest person I've ever known. Tough as nails. You know? Not a huggy, feely, lovey type person, nuts and bolts, Tough, biatch, hard worker, smart, boom, 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 get her done. She's crying like a baby. <laughs> She's crying her eyes out on the phone, and I go, oh, my God. You got to be kidding me. And so I says to her, what happened to Tracy? I don't know why I said that. <laughs> And then she couldn't even tell me. She was, couldn't stop crying. And she never cried. Never. Now. So I said, I'm coming over to get you. So I just hung the phone out, half drunk, sobered up by the time I got to the truck, headed over there, and she tells me what happens. <clears throat> and uh, we head over here to the hospital. 
We're standing in an emergency room waiting. We don't know what's going on. Uh, they won't tell us anything. So we're just standing there. I'm, I'm shaking. <laughs> I got a bad case of nerves. And my demons were manifesting. I was, what is going on here? Because my uh, daughter was the only person in my family that liked me. I only had the one friend. I had all kinds of other superficial friends, or acts of those, but I didn't have any real friends. <clears throat> so the uh, nurse comes out and says, they're taking her up to ICU. Where's that? Oh, down here. Go down the elevator and go down there. I go up to ICU and I'm standing by the elevator, just looking around, shaking. Her mother went to the waiting room and the door opens and they wheel out some person and I looked at that person, their head was like a monster movie, you know, all swollen up. But I recognized her nose. And they wheeled her past me and clunk. I think <laughs> I fainted. I couldn't believe it. And then, you know, it was a long story after that, but fast forwarding to uh, JB's restaurant. Some pastor from Bell Road, Assembly of God, up on Bell Road and 51 Freeway, had uh, befriended us because uh, he knew my older daughter. And so he, he kept coming back there when he found out who I was and who she was. He just kept coming back. He was there every night. It was weird. So after uh, uh, the Christmas miracle... We decided to go to their church. Why not? You know, my Tracy wanted to go. So I said, okay, you know, I need some church anyway. And uh, we went out to breakfast, and my daughter says uh, to me, hey, Dad, uh, you're living in sin. And I was pushing her in a wheelchair to go in the restaurant at the time, and I thought, geez. We're, we're <laughs> How does she know? I said to her, uh, oh, okay. I didn't say anything, but it kind of bothered me. I thought, why, why are you saying that to me? And then the next week we went to the church service on Sunday, and uh, I got her out of the truck, put her in a wheelchair, rolled her up to the threshold of the door there, and as soon as I stepped over that threshold, boom, something hit me. And I started shaking like that all the way over to the pew. And miraculously, her mother came to the service that day, and she didn't normally come to the church services. And so her mother was sitting in the pew there, and Tracy said, well, I, I want to sit in the pew next to mother. So I haul her out of the chair, put her in the pew. Now I sit in the chair, in, in the aisle. And then I'm sitting in the chair and shaking, and then I'm crying for some reason. And uh, her mother looks down at me. Uh, and I can't control it. And all these uh, bad things are going through my mind. Stuff I'd done, people I'd hurt, wars, uh, all this insanity. And uh, I never heard a, one word of the sermon, but at the end of the sermon I did hear, we're opening the altars. For some reason that got in. I thought, well, that must be what I need. And I stood up out of the wheelchair, grabbed the pew, and walked my way down every step, holding on. <laughs> I got down to the end and did a Peter Pan like a board, boom, on my face. I hit the ground. And 
I spent two hours crying and begging God to forgive me. When I woke up, the whole church was empty, the lights were off, and the assistant pastor and his wife stayed with me the whole time. No one was there. And when I got up, I felt like a new person. I could not believe it. I just felt like some kind of a massive load lifted off of me. Shocked. And I'm taking my daughter to breakfast again, and she says, I says to her, hey, Tracy, uh, did you hear any of us in your coma or hear me talking to you all the time or anything like that? No, she said, but I saw Jesus. I said, you saw Jesus? Yeah. Um, I said, well, what was he doing? He was just standing there looking at me. I said, well, what would you, you say to him? And she says, uh, nothing. And what, well, did he ever say anything? She, he, she says, yeah. He said, do you want to live? And I said, well, what would you tell her? What would you tell him? Well, I, I said, yes. Well, then what happened, hon? He disappeared. And, you know, on Christmas morning, 1996, she just woke up out of a brain-dead coma by the Christmas tree while I was talking to her. Just like that. So, if it hadn't been for Sunny Slope, I wouldn't be standing here. I wouldn't be anywhere. I'd be running a counseling business somewhere, doing something like that. And Sunny Slope, uh, this church was founded by Franklin Hall. He was one of the faith healers that were traveling the country back in the 40s and 50s. You know, you had Hall, Paul Kane, Neil Frisbee, Or Roberts, A.A. A. Allen, those guys, Jack Coe, all them guys back in the 50s. And uh, he was uh, similar to me. Uh, we're both from Kansas originally. And then Hall settled in San Diego, and that didn't work out, so he moved here. And then he built this church, and that guy, James, Jim, that's been helping us, was one of the people that built this church. And they own uh, this residential thing here, they own that one there, they own that little block, block castle right down the street here. They built that back in the 70s. So uh, Hall was a faith healer, saw thousands of people healed. He got famous on writing uh, fasting books. Everybody has a copy of a fasting book. And uh, uh, this church, they used to, used to be packed years ago. And it kind of, kind of went, the, 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 like A.A. A. Allen, it kind of fizzled. But somebody came to this church not too long ago, and he wanted to share it with you. Testing one, two. Pete, the preacher, please approach the auditorium front and tell us about your sunny slope. It's too loud, but it's, yeah, too, it's too loud, so you hold it a little further out. It's too loud here, out like there. Sunny slope, <laughs> preacher. Yeah, I was, uh, hey everybody, God bless you guys. Um, really wanted to come here today because this very church, I was living right down the street, strung out on heroin and meth, and I'd be up all night, so I'd just wander down here. I was like hanging out at churches, but I was all up in the back, and I'd be doing drugs, and getting high, and just hanging out with these stars, tweaking, you know, and, um... It's kind of emotional coming back here because you kind of forget where you were, you know. I, was, I got a wonderful wife, a home now. I got Jesus, I got peace, I got joy unspeakable. I got real friends, busloads of them. God's been good. And you forget how bad things were, you know. Um, so bear with me, but... One day I wandered in here, I don't know if I was already hanging on the back, but I wandered in here and I was approached by, I think it was five or eight guys. I got slain in the spirit. 
and uh, hit the ground. Boom. When was that? And uh, what did he say? They were pouring oil all over me and praying over me. Ten years ago. And I was hoping one of them would be here that would remember that because I just wanted to let you know I made it. Thank you. Amen. Because you know, they were praying for me. Amen. <laughs> really was praying hard. They wanted me to live and not die. Amen. They wanted me to see. And it's like the Lord giving me a good thing. I'm here. Thanks for praying for me. Uh, but trying to keep it because of people keep me on. But it's just so good being sober, you know, and full of the Holy Ghost, not needing drugs. Don't think about drugs ever. I come up here, I've been up here quite a few times now. And every time it's so amazing the thought of not <clears throat> doing, not even thinking about getting high never crosses my mind. That's only through deliverance in Jesus Christ. There's nothing else. Because I was a Christian. I thought I was a Christian before. But I would still get high. And I'd get high. And I'd get high. Now it's like nothing. It's like I never did it. Nothing. No addiction there, period. It's amazing. So I just wanted to share that with you guys and tell you guys all thanks for being in my life. And I love you. And hope I get to meet that guy that's here today. Tell him thanks. And God bless you. <clears throat> Perfect. I got in trouble uh, again uh, not too long ago. Uh, teaching about territorial warfare. Uh, I got a bunch of emails on it. People not happy with me. Uh, but uh, we don't have authority to cast down principalities. Okay? Unless they come looking for us. Okay, so... I can't cast down the demons over Tolleson. They run Tolleson. They get basically got the place in the bag. And I don't have authority from God to go over there and strip those demons out of the heavenlies and ship them to New Jersey where they belong. Okay? <laughs> over the years, I've had numerous people come to me in serious trouble. Serious trouble. Because they got into territorial warfare. And what happens is, once you start doing that, they hear you. They know you don't have authority for that. So they retaliate. And all these people, numerous, come to me over the years. Teen tears, sick, financially devastated, businesses falling apart. You name it, it, it can happen. Kids, kids attacked, parents sick. I mean, they can do, it's unreal. And, uh, you know, about, you know, maybe 50% of them or, or more, a little more, hear what I said. They actually listen to me and stop doing that. Some people, some people don't. They think I'm, I'm a kook. But Jesus never did that, nor did he ever tell any disciples to do that. Did you happen to notice that? Nobody but, well, if you, when you get around to reading the New Testament, focus on Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those would be the most important books in the Bible. Correct? All right. I got a lot of heathen here today. <laughs> No deliverances were territorial deliverances. None of the deliverances were anything other than your business, your personal business. Right? So we have authority over demons coming in here today, because this is our service. I don't have authority to go out there and take down Sunny Slope and cast all those demons up to Snowflake. We can't do that. 
This is personal. You got authority over these demons, these demons, and these demons right here. Hello? <laughs> okay. Well, let's take another testimony then from someone who understands this whole concept. Counselor Julie from the Deliverance Center. There she is. There she is. that a little bit. Actually, a week ago today, I received a message through text from a, a lady that I've been working with in California, and she asked me to take a look at a video done by Don Dickerson. Dickerman. Dickerman. And he was talking about territorial warfare. And I recall a couple, uh, maybe a month ago, Brother Rick, he sent me an interview with Don Dickerman and Pastor Vlad from Hungry Generation did an interview with him about territorial warfare. And I just thought, oh, okay, I've heard uh, Mike talk about that. Just kind of logged it in the back of my brain. Well, a week ago, she sends me this, um, she sends me the video and I watched a little bit of it. She asked me about territorial warfare and if I knew anything about it. Right away, I started having memories of myself up the top of Shaw Butte Mountain, which is right over here in Sunny Slope, praying like this against spirits attacking Sunny Slope. Uh huh. So I was as that? I'm writing her back, telling her she she my own testimony that's coming forth without me even really thinking about it. Yes. What year is that? That was in 19, oh no, 2003. You know, I moved, to, I moved into Sunny Slope in 2001. So I think by 2004, around there, early 2000s is when it started. But I, I so I, 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 the memory of it, what was brought back to me is the point. Um, but I would like to share, because I know it's gonna share, I got saved in 1992, uh, 1991 I got saved, and I was on fire for the Lord, completely on fire. I got rid of all my secular music, I got rid of my, uh, I was living in South Florida at the time, and I dressed, I, I barely dressed, I got rid of all those clothes, I stopped going to the clubs, I stopped drinking, I mean, I completely did a 180 in my life. When I met Jesus, I was smitten. Okay? I got married. I went to college. I was going to Bible studies. I started a ministry at Grand Canyon University called Impact. We were reaching the lost. It was amazing. I, I saw miracles. I, I was attacked, and I didn't understand that I was attacked at that time. But what I'm trying to say is I went a long time. I got married. He left, I got divorced, I stayed with the Lord, I joined Fire and Water Ministries, I was with them, I was praying, I moved out of my three-bedroom house, I moved into a studio, and I would have what I called date night with Jesus from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock at night. Every night was date night with Jesus. I mean, I fasted, I prayed, I didn't, guys were not on the radar, I was focused. And then my dad died. And that broke my heart. And I was at that time attending um, a church, and Pastor Barnett I was the pastor, and he said, if you have a need, you go and find someone who has a greater need than you, and he'll take care of you. And my heart was completely broken. That my dad died in two months after being sick. And I decided it was summertime. I wasn't working that summer as a teacher. And I said, I'm going to go and I'm going to serve. I'm already serving in this ministry, but I have time on my hands. So Saturday morning, I went and I joined the adopt a block program. And that took me here to Sunny Slope. And I met a family, which I ended up helping that family out for 15 years here in Sunny Slope. And I moved to Sunny Slope. And I said, I'm going to be, I'm going to live among the people I'm serving. 
I brought food, I brought clothing, I convinced my friends to give up their food and clothing to bring to these people. I went door to door. I had, um, they anointed me as a block pastor. It was amazing. And I bought this house right over here in Sunny Slope, and I used to hike the mountain. And I could see Sunny Slope, and there's a line of delineation between a very barren Sunny Slope and a lush Sunny Slope. It's very clear, it's right at the canal. And I said, wow, that looks like poverty to me. And I've seen the poverty, because I'm walking the streets, I'm handing out food, I'm meeting the prostitutes, I'm visiting the flop houses. I was all here, you know, I met the people. And so I started praying. <laughs> I started praying, and I don't know, binding the spirits of poverty, and binding the drug spirits. And I started praying over Sunny Slope. <laughs> I didn't know that. Where did you get that idea to do that? I don't know. I mean, I've been going to a Pentecostal church. I read the Bible. I, I don't know how I knew that. I just thought, Lord, I, I want to serve you, and these people are bound, and I want to help set the captives free. So, oh, Were you delivered at that point? No, I had no idea. So I, right, yeah. I didn't know anything about um, spirits. I was being used of God a lot, right? Then I started getting attacked in my house. Yeah. I had a spirit that came up the, my stairs. I heard it, and it pointed a gun right at my head. I opened my eyes. I thought for sure I was going to see a person standing there. I could feel them touching my body. And then one night, um, I, oh my gosh, it was crazy. I, I finished. So many good things were happening in my life at this time. I was healthy. I finished my second degree in counseling. I was getting married for the second time. Everything was going very, very well. My finances were good. My relationship was great. Ministry was going well. And I started having a panic attack in the middle of the night. I couldn't breathe. The next night, the same thing happened a little earlier. In the night, and I couldn't sleep the rest of the night. I woke up as if I was being choked. I, was, I couldn't breathe. I was afraid. I was crying. I couldn't go back to sleep. Four nights in a row. By that last week, by the end of the week, that night, I was so tormented. I took my first day on Expo. That began a long road of 18 and a half years of anxiety disorder, depression, panic disorder. I was then later diagnosed with PTSD and ADD. 18 years. I know now I engaged in a fight that I had no business being in. Thank God he brought me back. He rescued me. I'm free now of all those things. I no more medication. If anxiety comes, I send it away immediately in the name of Jesus Christ, and I'm no longer bound by those things, and now I know what I'm doing with my life. But that for 18 years, I was so confused. I was so sick. And I really blame myself so much, but this last week I realized I was totally attacked. And uh, anyway, that's my testimony. Thank you. All right. Perfect. Now, if you go to uh, Matthew chapter 8 and 9, that's, those are the miracle chapters of the Bible. Right, Pete? Yeah. And in, the, in those chapters, you'll see somebody like Pete. He staggers in the door. Was that the door he came in? I really don't remember. Oh. He staggered in one of these doors. Yeah. He was a drug addict. Uh, basically, a piece of human pond scum. Controlled by the devil, totally, completely. Didn't have any friends. Was going to die and go to hell. He staggers in the door here. And five guys who, who didn't know him from Adam 
care about him. They ran up to him, started praying for him. Then they started hosing him down with oil. Remember that? In fact, these guys didn't do it like I do. No, Pete didn't get that treatment. He got, he got the African oil treatment. <laughs> Down he goes. What a great testimony and great memory, too. <clears throat> and that's what happened to Matthew. He's sitting there at the desk of customs, a human pond scum. Nobody liked him. His family didn't like him. Nobody liked him. Publicans. That's the Greek word, telonus. It means tax farmers. Everybody hated them. The Romans hated them because they were Jewish. The Jews, Jews hated them because they were collecting money for Rome. And everybody, particularly the religious people, absolutely despised them. And Jesus walks by the table. Pete, come walking in here. And he says... Follow me then. And then he goes to his house and has dinner. Instead of dinner, Pete got African oil all over him. And then the religious people came, you remember the story, and they started to file complaints. They said, what are you hanging around people like Pete? Well, here at the healing Cathedral, they didn't follow that prescription. They were happy when Pete staggered in. They were, uh, they were probably praying that Pete would stagger in, be my guess. And Jesus said, hey, I came to seek and to save those who are lost. <laughs> yeah, and that's why the world doesn't have any real interest in Christ because they don't see themselves as lost. And one of the best things that can ever happen to you in life is to actually see yourself as you really are. And that is the biggest nightmare you could ever face. Having to stare at yourself in the mirror is the worst thing on the planet. And then it turns into the best thing. The Jews wouldn't do that in the Old Testament, would they? They kept on sinning and God sent them the law Thus saith the Lord. And they said, ooh, we can't keep that law. We can't do that. And God said, I know you can't do that. That's why I sent it to you. The purpose of the law was not for you to keep it. It was to show you you can't keep it. Oh, I'm going to get emails now. There, that can, I can hear them typing in right now. The law is a schoolmaster God designed to drive you to Christ. The law was designed to force you to go after mercy. Because these are my requirements, the Lord said. There's over 600 laws in the Old Testament. There they are. And that's good. What do we do with them? Well, the Lord said, I want you to keep these laws. Okay, now let's negotiate a deal on it. How about 60% of them? How about 70%? How about 100%? I didn't hear you. You have to keep 100% your entire life. He dropped dead, never violating one law. Now, why would God do something that appears to be totally foolish? Why would you set up a system guaranteed to fail? What if I said to John, John, the Lord told me that you are to go out here on that ledge and just dive off and fly to Denny's and save us some seats. John would go, 
I think Brother Mike's a false prophet. And well, he should, because I asked him to do something he can't do. I appear to be an idiot. God appeared to be an idiot. I want you all to do this, but I know you can't do it. Wow. You ever been married to somebody like that? I have. Uh, uh, that wasn't the purpose of the law. The law was set up to show you you couldn't keep it in a million years. You could not fulfill God's holiness standards if you tried for an eternity. You'd never make it. So I want you to use the law of Moses to run to my son. It was so bad that they sprinkled the blood of bulls and goats on it, and that would only cover your sin temporarily. They called it the atonement. But it was still there. It covered it. But if you'll run to my son, it will disappear, and you will have no sin. You'll be a sinless poison. So that's why when people like Pete stagger in some place, the Holy Ghost looks up and runs over to them like Hussein Bolt to get them, and a parade of cardinals comes in, popes, and they get nothing. He doesn't even look at them. Right? A, a drug addict comes in, Staggers in the door, and they run over to him. Why? Well, he had broken racks of laws. And these cardinals and popes and bishops came in. They'd broken very few, and in their mind, they were fine. Now, why would the Holy Ghost go the opposite direction? Well, because they're not fine. The law said, I want all of them kept. No exceptions. You break one of them, you go to hell. What? You got to be kidding. So what happened to the Jews? Oh, all these idols came in and said, hey, wait a minute, whoa, time out here. Our standards for salvation for you are lower than Jehovah's. We're down here. Oh, great. Yeah, okay, I'm going to go with Isis. I'm going to go with Artemis. I'm going to go with Moloch. Because you can be accepted at a lower, okay, which is happening in our society now. Everybody's lowering the standards in Christianity, so it's down here, so you can't even tell a Christian from a hoe. That's how it works. Right? Yeah. So if you'll leave the law and run to grace, like Pete did, you can get delivered from demons, you can get healed. Why? Because instead of blood sacrifices, it's all based on faith. Faith and believing. That's the new system. We went from the law of Moses to the law of faith. <laughs> Which is the only law I can afford to get involved in. I can't do any other laws. See, I make too many mistakes. I know what you're thinking. Come on. <laughs> no, call my wife. Be a long call. But grace is where the law wanted to push you to. Push you. Bend over. Bang. Go to grace. Eh? 
So now the devil doesn't use the law of Moses. He doesn't care about it. We're Americans. We're not Jewish. He, he's not interested. Now it's a demon of rejection. You reject yourself. You reject others. They reject you. You grow up with low esteem. You have a low self-concept. Why are they doing that? Because the law of faith is then aborted. Because you don't believe God would help somebody like you. And in Matthew, that's the purpose of that luncheon. He sat down with the publicans and sinners at Matthew's house. Everybody looked at him and they said, whoa, wait a minute. These are The law says Matthew is Satan incarnate, so to speak. Jesus said, wait a minute. The law is designed to drive you to me where you can get mercy and grace to help in time of need. That's what happened to Pete. That's how it works. It's the simplicity of Christ. You can have anything you can believe for. And you're, you're sinless when you ask. If you confess your sins and repent of it, it's gone. There's no more atonement anymore. That's out. I don't need an atonement. I, I've got nothing. There's nothing to atone for. I've been washed in the blood. So that allows me to ask God to help you. And that's your job in life. You're supposed to be asking God to help other people. You're supposed to be a people person. Okay. But as you know, in the last days, men will be lovers of themselves. And that's what we're staring at here. It's a TikTok generation. But the Holy Ghost doesn't pay no never mind to that stuff. He's ready to go now. And what's your name, ma'am? Yeah. Sheila. Sheila. What do you need from the Lord today, hon? I guess deliverance. Deliverance from what, sweetie? Um, backsliding. Backsliding? Okay. Now, was you uh, hurt or abused as a kid? Yes. Now, who did it? My cousin. What was his name? Gilbert. Did it, was it uh, verbal abuse or sexual abuse? Sexual abuse. Gilbert was his name? Yes. Oh. Can you come up here for a second? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, stand right there. Would you like to be healed of that? Oh, yes, please. Oh, good. There we go. She said, yes, please. So that made my day. So there's no law here. She went to Christ, didn't you, sweetie? Yes. And she got grace. See? There was sin with the law. There's no sin here. So therefore, that rejection demon has got to come out right now. Rejection demons cannot stand grace. That is a chalkboard scratch. It drives them crazy. Come out of there. Stop fooling around. Come on. Let's go. Come out. Gilbert. What was the name? Gilbert. You come out of her right now, you pervert. Come on out. Right now, just take a breath and blow, honey. Grace covers you. There you go. Come out, Gilbert. We forgive you for what you did. We ask God to bless you. We ask God to have mercy on you. Come out, you spirit of perversion and rejection. Come out. Come on out. Come out right now. I forgive him and I release him from my soul right now. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' holy name. Come on. Out. Come out, spirit. Come on out. 
I'm going to let your tears go, honey. You're getting healed today. Grace causes everyone to get healed. Come out of there. There we go. Come on out. Come on out. I release these demons from my cousin right now. And I repent of backsliding. There's no reason to backslide. I'm fully loved. I'm fully forgiven. I've been washed in the blood. Come on out, Gilbert. Come out of your throat. Come out of her throat. There he is. Come on out. That's him right there. Every demon from Gilbert come out of that throat right now. There it is. Here it comes. Come on, right now. Come out of there. There it comes. There it comes. There we go. <clears throat> come on out. Come out. You get out of there. You get out of there. Come out. Come on. You help her. Come on. Get out of there. Come on out. He's helping you right now, sweetie. Grace covers you. The law has been fulfilled in Christ. That's the Greek word teleao. It means to be complete. He completed the law and brought it to an end. Here it goes. Come out. Come on out, sweetie. Satan, lose your hold. Come up. Get out of there. Get out of that body. Amen. There you go. Come out. Ooh. Get out of there. There you go. Those are fear demons. Those are fear demons. Get out of there. Hi, sweetheart. Come on now. What is it? Let your tears go. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. There it is. All these wounds. All these people that trashed you. Come out of that. But here it comes. He's right there. Thank you, Jesus. Come out. Come on out. Come out. Let her go. Come on, honey. Get him out of there. He's right there. Here he comes. There he goes. There he goes. Come on, sweetie. Come here, sweetie. Come here, sweetie. Thank you. Come out. Come here, Hi, hon. How are you today? I'm very good to see you. Yeah, what do you need from the Lord? What's happening? He's blessing me already just being here and coming with my friends. See what it is. You need anything out of there? Child. Oh, there it is right there. There he is. That's him. Come on out. Breathe out of your mouth. Breathe out of your mouth. Yes. Who hurt you? Who did that? Who hurt you? Who? Who, who hurt you in your past? Yeah, but there's something of him left there. What's his name? It was my brother. Your brother? And what's his name? He's passed on. It's Ron. What's his name? Ron? Okay. Father God, Ron's demons transferred into here 
and hurt her very bad. And those spirits have to come out. Ron's already dead. He's gone now. There's nothing can be done. But we have already forgiven him. We've already asked you to forgive him. That's all done. The only thing left, out. Okay, close your eyes. Take a big breath. Breathe out of your mouth. Keep breathing. Come out of there right now. Every sexual perversion demon from your brother, come out now. Come on, let's go. Come on now. What's wrong with you? Um, I think hey, John. I'm just a little. <laughs> Love you. Yeah, you. What's wrong with you? Um, I think I'm just trying to do too much. Trying to. I, I think what you started with the domain over. The what? The domain over areas that I have not. Well, oh, you did what Julie did. He did that. Hey, this guy did that. He's going to end up. He did what you did. Oh yeah. Go ahead and repent of it. Go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. Satan, lose your hold. Up and up, right now. You gotta let your brother go right now. Let him, there it is. Keep coughing. He's coming. There it is, right there. Keep coughing. He's coming up right now. Let your brother go. Every demon from my brother. Come out. Come out of there. Every bad memory. Come out. Come out. Come out. Get out. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. There he is. There he is right there. There he is. Thank you, Jesus. Let her go. Get her out of her throat. Stop choking her. Stop choking her. Stop it. Stop choking her. Stop choking her. Oh, crap. There's no. Come out. Come out there. Come on. Come out. Come out. Spirit of infirmity, come out of there right now. Chronic pain, go. Come out. Come out right now. Misery and sadness from childhood. Come out. Get out right now. Get out right now. Get out right now. Go. Get out of her back. Get out of her back right now in Jesus' name. Get out of her back right now. Get out. Get out. There he is. Oh, here he comes. Come out, you witch. Witchcraft. Let her go. Let her go. Get out. Go. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out right now. Get out of her mind. Get out of her mind. Get out of her mind. Oh, mind control. Mind spice. Get out of her mind. Let her go. Let her go. Go. Let her go. Go. Let her go. Go. Let her go. Get out of her mind. I didn't even send this to dozen people. Get out. 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 Get out.
made out to Miss Torbett's sickness. All the Torbett she suffered as a child is out right now in Jesus' name. Come out of the heart. Come out of her stomach. Let her go. 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 She's got demon from her husband. Right there. There he is. Come out of her stomach. Here he comes. Here he comes. There he comes. Get out right now. Get out right now in Jesus' name. Get up right now. Come out. Heavy burdens. Let's go. Heavy burdens for the family. Come out right now in Jesus' name. Let her go. Well, you child molester, you get out of there right now. Sadness from childhood, pain and fear from what he did. Come out right now. There he is. That's him right there. Come out of her. Get out of me right now. Satan, lose your hold. Come on, sweetheart. Fight it out. That a girl. Thank you, Jesus. Get out right now. Get out right now. Get out of her. Get out of her. Let her go. 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 Get out of the back right now. Get out of there 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 right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pope demons. You Pope demon. Pope demons. No. Get out. Here he comes. There he comes. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Satan. Come out of there. Bishops. Bishop demons. Cardinal demons. Rosary demons. Mother Mary. Go. Priests. Bishops. Cardinals. Go. Demons from popes. Come on. Come on. Satan, I command you to come out and lose your hold. Every pope demon, every cardinal, every bishop, every priest. Come out of there. Rosary demons out. Every demon from child molestation. I command my brother's spirits to come out of me right now. All the wounds and fear he put in my soul when I was young leaves today. 
I repent of territorial warfare. I repent of attacking demons over cities, counties, states, countries. I repent of it now in the name of Jesus. I renounce territorial deliverance. I renounce it and I reject it. It's over. I command sexual perversion demons. I command low self-esteem. What was wrong with her? She had a there? lot of lot of pain with Gilbert. She released that. And every other man. How are you feeling right now? What? Heavy. Now, something else is in there. What is it? Did somebody else hurt you? Did you ever get raped or date raped? Your cousin, that was it? Anybody ever physically beat you up or anything like that? Slapping you around? Are you married? Are you divorced? Uh, you got any kids? Yeah, did you were you ever involved with Native American spiritualism? Were you ever involved in witchcraft or New Age? This heaviness you've got. When did that start? Oh, since you were little? I see like a dark, a dark cloud and I feel like I want to pull it out. Okay. Have you ever been on drugs? I am on medication. Have you ever been on illegal drugs? What kind of meds are you on? I take Percocet for pain. Where's the pain at? Oh, you got fibro in your legs. Where at? In your chest. Okay. Huh. All right. Close your eyes. Thank you. Did you, did you ever used to hate yourself? Did you ever used to hate yourself when you were young? Yeah. You did? How come? Because I didn't feel worthy. You didn't feel worthy? Okay, go ahead and repent of that. The blood of Jesus makes you worthy. You're totally worthy. Now I release the spirit of rejection and self-rejection from my body and my brain right now. I command this demon to come out of my chest. Out. Come out. Rejection. Come out. Get out of there. Get out of there. Spirit of rejection from childhood in the name of Jesus. Command you to come out of the woman of God. Come out of her. Low self-esteem, low self-concept, self-hatred. Come out right now. Tonight, we rebuke and we bind the powers of Roman Catholicism in this service. Roman Catholicism in this service. You are bound in Jesus' name. And we command you to come out of every Catholic, every person in this service exposed to Catholicism. Command you to come out and come out now. Childhood, sexual abuse, come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Childhood, sexual abuse. Let's go. Today we come against bitterness, revenge, 
hatred, rage. Today, bitterness and unforgiveness is bound and must come out right now. Bitterness and unforgiveness is bound and must come out. Come on. Come out in Jesus' name. Anger, bitterness, pride and arrogance, I bind your power. Pride and arrogance, I bind your power. Come out. Come out. Sickness, sickness, illness, disease. I command you by the blood, the Son of God, to just simply die. Just die. I command you, just simply die. Come out, you foul devil. Come out, you foul spirit. Thus saith the Lord. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Rejection and low self esteem. Come out. Rejection and low self esteem. You come out right now. Let's go. Come out in the name of the Lord. Get out of there. Let's go. Come out. Heaviness, come out of her chest. Heaviness, come out. Territorial demons. I repent of attacking principalities and powers in the heavens. I command the demons in this service to leave. Lord, I pray for Sunny Slope, and I ask you to bless this. I ask you to bless this area and forgive them of their sin. I ask you to have mercy on their souls. I ask you, Lord, to forgive the drug addicts, the alcoholics, the criminals of Sunny Slope. I ask that you come to them with mercy. I ask that you come to them with grace. We pray for revival for Sunny Slope and let it start here at the Healing Cathedral. Lord God, I pray for the criminals roaming the streets of Sunny Slope. I pray for them, Lord. I pray for them. I pray for their healing and deliverance and their salvation. Every foul spirit attacking this church, I bind your power. Every spirit in this building, I command you, go. Go out of this building. Thus saith the Lord. Come up. Come up. Poison from medications. Poison from drugs. Pharmakia. Pharmakia. Witchcraft. Come up. Witchcraft. Pharmakia. Come up. Medications. The demons of medication. Go. Come out. Father God, I ask you to forgive me of my sin tonight. Have mercy upon me for my disobedience and my arrogance. Have mercy upon me, Lord. Thank you for caring about Sunny Slope. Thank you for the blood that Jesus shed. Thank you for the Holy Ghost, the one and only. Thank you for the Spirit of the living God, the one and only. Thus saith the Lord, come out. Religious demons, Protestant demons, Catholic demons, 
Get out of there. Come out. Come out in Jesus' holy name. You get out of that body right now. Sickness and illness. Fibromyalgia, I curse you. Come out. Fibro. Come out of her legs. Come out of her chest. Fibromyalgia demons. Let's go. Fear. Spirit of fear. Fibromyalgia is caused by fear demons. Lord, I repent of my fear today. I take authority over this fibromyalgia and this fear spirit in my body. Fibro come out. Fibro, I told you to come out right now. Come out. Fibromyalgia. Let's go. Come out. You got to come out right now. Fibromyalgia. Come out. Get out of her chest right now. Come out of her chest. Hurry up. Come out of her throat. Come out of her throat. Thus saith the Lord. I will pray with the understanding and I will pray with the spirit. Remo Shandra Vashavela Yendo Shatrivi Yeko Ramo Shavasa. I will pray with the understanding, then I will pray with the spirit. I will sing with the understanding, then I will sing with the spirit. Remo Shava Yelolilovia. Rondora ve eu re re si Thank you Jesus Surely he has borne our sorrows Surely he has carried our griefs the chastisement and punishment for our peace was upon him and by his stripes by his bruises we are healed we are healed today is your day of healing that's it it's not tomorrow it's not Sunday no it's today Thus saith the Holy Ghost, now is the accepted time. Today is the day of sozo, deliverance. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time for deliverance, sozo. Now is the accepted time for repentance. Now is the accepted time we come against all religious spirits from Protestants and Catholics all religious demons blocking the anointing of the Holy Ghost we break your power right now we command you to stop thus saith the Lord thus saith the Lord come unto me all ye who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Today is the day of rest and healing. Just receive it at the Healing Cathedral in Slunny Slope, Arizona. This is it. This is it. Today is the day of salvation. Sozo, deliverance, today. Now is the accepted time. Oh, another breakthrough over here. Five row, you get out of that body. There's another breakthrough. The gal just got healed of fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is not a medical condition. It's a spirit. It's a caused by fear demons. They cause fibromyalgia. You got to go for the fear demon, the root. You have to go to the root of all diseases in order to get them cured. Go for the root 
a root of bitterness in your soul does what? It makes you physically sick. Living with willful sin, doing it deliberately, does what? It makes you sick. You get sick. Living with unforgiveness in your soul does what? It brings on an autoimmune disease. Autoimmune diseases. You ready to preach, buddy? You want to preach? Thank you, Jesus. So this, this little girl came out, she groaned and she released her because she hit. And then once she did that, like uh, like everything flew out. Her pain, she said her pain is uh, is Oh, there it is. Come out of there. Come out. Get out of there right now. Get out of that body. Come out. Get out of there right now. There he is. He's right there. Mind control. Here he comes. Oh. Stand up, sweetheart. Hey, baby. There you go. Now, how's your chest feel here? Any pain? Is there any pain anywhere? Not that I can feel. Now check yourself out. Check your body out. Move around. Does this hurt? What'd she say? Her legs are heavy. Uh oh. Now, close your eyes there. There we go. Breathe out of your mouth. Big breath. Come out, you spirit of childhood fear. Come out of them knees right now. Come on out. Childhood fear. Loneliness. Loneliness from childhood. Ouch. There it is. Loneliness from childhood. Come out. Come out of my knees. Get on that body right now and come out. Come out right now. Go now. Let go of her. Stop tormenting her. You come out of her spine right this second. Go. Come out of her spine. Come out right now. Right now, come out, Terry. Come out, Miss Spirit of Terry. Come out. Come out. Okay, now, come out right now. Go. 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 She's ready. Knee brace. Come on, right now. Pain in these joints right now. Go. Strengthen. Heal. Strengthen and heal. Joints be healed. Muscles. Okay. Muscles now check your knees out. Anything? Is it worse or better? Worse, better, or the same? About the same on my knee. You know? what? About the same on my knee, but everything else. Now, well, how'd you hurt that knee? It's, I don't know. I think it's from driving because I'm short on the way the seat sits. Oh, is it a Velcro? Yeah. The Velcro? Okay, take that off. Okay. Here, have a seat over here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And scoot your fanny all the way back up there. There you go. Uh -huh. All right, now you take your take their legs like this. Okay, your legs like and you find the, you find the ankle knuckle. See the knuckle right there? Ankle knuckle. See that? Yes. Okay. You take them like this. See that? Underneath the ankle knuckle, like that. I'm doing. Try that. Underneath. See that? Okay, and then you kind of pull them out and put them together. Notice. Notice any difference? Notice this leg is longer than that one. Yeah. Are you under the ankle knuckle on both of them? Yeah. You are? Okay. You see that leg there is longer than that one? Uh -huh. See where knuckle is, your knuckle's here, and that one's down there. 
Yep. See that? Yep. And then this knee's jacked up. Yes. Okay. Ready? All right. Hold them. Hmm? Just hold them. Hold them while it grows out. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Let's go. Heal. Heal. Grow out. Come on out. And heal. Okay, it's not, that's not, that's not working. Hey, does somebody ever put a curse on you or anything like that? A word curse? I think the Holy Spirit told me somebody did. Who did it? I was at work one day, and it's like a, from an African... Uh, oh, okay, you know their name? I don't remember the name. Okay, let's pray for him right now, okay? Lord, I want you to find that African guy. It's a girl. A girl. It's a lady. That African girl that uh, spoke negatively about her. I want you to go find her and forgive her. I want you to tell her that we have forgiven her. We all agree to that, all five of us. Well, six, I guess. We all agree that he is to be, she is to be forgiven right now in Jesus' name. She forgives her right now. We break this curse off of her. All right, now check out the knuckles again. See if there's any change. The knuckles. Remember when you had your knuckles on? Remember, yeah, then underneath the knuckles. Where is it? Find the knuckles. Yeah, I'll go underneath them like that. Okay, here. Now you're, oh well, go above them then. Okay, they're even now. Stand up. Okay, uh, walk on your knee. What's the story? What's the story? What's the story? How's that feel? It feels okay. It feels fine? Yeah. Oh, here you go. She didn't give testimony. It was some curse, see? See, if it doesn't work, if it doesn't work, something's blocking it. It's not God. He wants to heal everybody. So you can dig around more in there. So you can figure out what it is. So this one. Sorry, no, it was a curse. She said it was a curse. Did you hear? Her? And so then it came out. The demons are flying out of your husband. They're flying out of him. This is your chance to be delivered. Get that thing out of here. Get mad at him. This is your day. You're both getting healed today. This is your day. Your husband's getting healed. You never dreamed he could get healed. He's getting healed right now. Come on, sweetie. Say that. Satan, come out of me. Get a girl. Good. We got two Catholics going through major deliverance. If you're a Catholic, ah, you should repent of it. Familiar spirits, Catholics. Folks, the devil's getting his face kicked in here. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough people show up. I was hoping for a hundred deliverances today. Come on, sweetie, fight! 
Come on, honey, it's your day. This is it. Your husband's getting delivered. Satan, come out. Satan, let go. Get out of there. Get out. There it is. Go. Get out of her body. 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 Uh, oh, demons. On, Bishops. Bishop, come out of there. Come Priest. Come Rosary, come out of there. Rosary, evil, come out. Evil. False religion. Get out of there. False religion in Jesus' name. Get out of <laughs> Clean up. Clean up on aisle four. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you today for healing these poor people. Thank you for healing them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I purge you out of anger. I purge you out of Jesus' name, anger.